Hi guys, we want to start this episode off with a huge thank you to our first and only, so far, donator Robert K. Robert, your donation is going straight to a new KISS grounding system thing that helps out our high frequency radio so we can actually hear people versus just guessing guessing what they're saying and what weather is actually happening too so thank you so much for that we also want to give out a huge shout out to all viewers who have been leaving us awesome comments about our episodes there are a lot more to come so sit back and get ready because you're going underneath the golden gate bridge and down the california coast on sv prism cheers these are the adventures of sv prism the crew on board are looking to experience new cultures and new landscapes as they sail their 33-foot cutter beyond horizon. I really enjoyed Horseshoe Cove. Horseshoe Cove is a great little cove right at the north end of the San Francisco Bay entrance. Um, it's, there really is no closer cove to jump off from if you're leaving to go out to San Francisco Bay. So we're going out the gate, trying to, and we have a big freighter coming, which is always fun to share the gate with someone like that. So. Uh, the excitement starts. Love going underneath the Golden Gate. It's a great way to start a uh, sailing adventure, even if it's not a permanent one like ours. We're doing it again! Prison crosses underneath the Golden Gate for the second and last time. Poison the sails, we had just barely enough wind and I don't really think we were sailing as much as we were being sucked out by the tide. But you know, the sails were up, it looked good. are out under the gate into the Pacific Ocean. The wind picked up for a second and it was wonderful so we turned off the engines but they died again. We have two engines now? The engines? Yeah. Yeah. It's a mass exodus of boats. This guy just gave us a lovely wake. Thanks. Jerk off. Ew. 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 Thank God for those 25,000 pounds. It's always a bit nerve-wracking going out underneath the gate. Uh, there's a lot of traffic always, and they're big, I can kill you traffic too. A little excitement, I was down in the galley and I started seeing smoke coming from the uh, engine compartment. I'm like, ah! So I turned off the engine real quick, went down there and verified that we had oil and everything was good, but there was just a little oil left on top of the, uh, the valve covers. So it just, it was just, smoking that off, so no big deal. But, you know, get your heart pumping a little bit. The red buoy behind us now means we are now leaving the shipping lanes of San Francisco and we are now officially heading south. Sailed out of the anchorage and then just... There's not much wind right now, huh, Shan? No, it's not. This is... Um, I'll be lucky if we have any herring left by the time we get to Half Moon Bay. Rain's a little loud. Just a little bit. Are we going to Half Moon or are we going all the way to Capitola now? I don't know. Yeah. We'll see how we feel yeah. when we get to happen. Uh, yeah. I want to turn in and say F this. You're not going to whistle? Nope. If I whistle, we're going to get hit with like 25, 30 knots of wind. That'd be good. Jam. Not too long into the trip, 
the wind picked up and the swell did too. And so all of a sudden we had 15, 20 knots of wind on our tail or on our quarter with pretty good size uh, swell, um, sometimes going to about 10, 12 feet. I left this morning with the idea that we were sailing to Half Moon Bay. Um, we got to Half Moon Bay and John's like, oh no, we're going on to Capitola. I think it was his plan all along. Sneaky men. I took a Bonine before we left just because a lot of times I think it's more nerves than anything that gets to me. Um, and then nerves with heavy seas equals seasickness for Shannon. And John was just telling me that I need to buck up and not use that stuff to get used to my tummy. Not say buck up. Did not say buck up. You sound like an asshole. Correction. He told me to man up. I did not say that either. Yes, you did. But I think your body. Yes. You told me that I need to man up. Oh. Yes. Anyway, that. Yes, you did. Anyways. At least the island's in the background now for dramatic effect. Well, yeah. And, you know, trying not to take these giant ass swells on our broadside. You look very salty. You're like, you're like yeah. that iconic. Like, uh, uh, the wheel. Okay, so that island, yeah. Um, we died. John goes, is that an island up ahead? Yes. Do you think we can go between it and the mainland? Uh, no. The waves never look too big on camera, but I can tell you these are these are nice size. They're uh, they're probably round and ten foot. A few of them probably twelve feet. I gotta say, one of my favorite parts of having Hank on sails though is the bowsprit seat that it turns into. If you look around me, I'm just kind of buttoned in up here, and you're just. You're with one with the, the boat, it's incredible. Just watching the boat function and work and just move water, it's freaking awesome. And I mean, you, I mean the boat it feels so safe. I mean, we're on our old boat. I mean, I'd be terrified being up at the bow, but this is, this is awesome, this is incredible. And this is kind of the first time we've been able to enjoy the boat going up on the foredeck, because going down Washington coast, it was miserable. It was wet, and cold, and nasty, this is, I'm in a jacket, it's still kind of chilly, but you can actually be out here and enjoy it. But these swells are getting big. They're, and yeah, they're just, they're good size. Again, it doesn't look like much on camera, but I can tell you that they're, they're getting to be about the height of the boom. And then that's like the normal size. And the big ones go about halfway up between the boom and the spreaders, so they're fair size. Woo, hold on. Good guess there too, that's probably about 20 on the face. So, no, we're just jamming. We're probably doing eight knots right now. Oh my God, that's incredible.
we're right on the uh, north side of the pier. It's a little rolly out. Uh, we anchored in about uh, dolphins right there. Right off our stern. Dolphins? Yeah, right, right off our stern. We have animals all around us. We are in the Monterey Bay, finally. And I have been burdened with the task of fitting the flopper stopper. The flopper stopper for people that are now looking at the screen with a cocked head, thinking, what is he talking about? Flopper stopper does exactly what it implies. It stops the flop. So as you can see, the whine in the screen as we talk, because it's a little, there's some reverberation of the swell coming through here uh, in the Monterey Bay. So what I have here is a flopper stopper. It works by letting water go through it, and then once the boat pulls up via the boom on the beam of the boat, it stops the water from going back through it. So it, and it stops from, it reduces the roll. Not trying to get terribly scientific with this. Uh, but anyway. and then, and voila. Now, you gotta be aware that this puts a lot of pressure on your hand when it starts rolling in your hand. So make sure you're ready to tie this off pulls right out of your hands if you're not ready. It was a bit of a rolly night last night, but um, it was a good one. Uh, we changed directions in the middle of the night, but anchor held fine. A little bit of wind out here. I think we're going to just, uh, the alternator started having a weird noise and it looks like the mount got kind of I want to say tweaked but just moved a little bit where the fan on the front of it was starting to hit the metal so I got to fix that this morning and then we're just gonna glide over to uh, Capitola there's about you know five six knots on the water right now I think with the drifter and the main we could probably just you know mosey over there how do you know it was a really night last night it's when you pull your flopper stopper out and it doesn't come back with all the parts. That used to have four blades. I just wanted to express how stoked I am right now that we've switched out our furling uh, jib to hank on because now we get to use a sail that came with the boat. Uh, the, I believe it's a drifter or it's a lapper, one of the two. Probably other people more knowledgeable than me can tell me the difference. but. Um, very light wind, very light sail, but big. It's about the size of a Genoa. It's probably no more than five knots out here, if that. And we are cruising, and this was a feathering prop, but this is our home, probably right around 23, 24,000 pounds. 4.1 knots and five knots of wind, if that. Pretty, pretty darn cool. And there's really no current here at all that I'm aware of inside of. Is there a current inside of? Mm. It's so light that there's no more wind. Shannon forgot to braid her hair yesterday. Now she's complaining that it's all knotted. No problem. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? Nothing. We're not motoring anymore. Except for in and out of anchorages. But even then, I think we're gonna get good enough to be able to anchor without a motor. That's our goal. Your current speed is 1.6 knots. Monterey Bay is one of the most popular coastal attractions in California, by land or sea. What makes Monterey so special is that the bay is almost entirely protected leaving the marine life to thrive. When you are sailing into Monterey, you are almost guaranteed to see this untamed life almost right away. Capitola was one of our favorite spots along the California coast, but recently the politics connected to the anchorage have made it an anchoring nightmare. 
we were treated rudely by simply trying to get information about the anchoring rules and policies. There was so much confusion, we even had the cops called on us before we got to land. The following day, after finding the correct and legal place to anchor, we were joined by members of the Hushaw family, Mike and his daughter Marissa. Together we made our way, sailing with just a slight breeze across the bay, out and around towards Stillwater Cove. Stillwater Cove is a little slice of heaven. I'm sure it would be a bit different when filled with mega yachts. But after the summer season is over, the only thing you have to worry about is sharing the space with the kelp and jagged rocks. So this is what happens when uh, come down everyone what comes in by boat and there's only one car to pick everyone up. <laughs> so we're, we're in the Hush Hour <laughs> Lexus. Oh, is this a Lexus, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, it feels nice. Yeah. But it's not designed for it's not designed for nine people or whatever we have in here. Seven. Seven. It feels good though. Yeah, it's, it's impressive. So, uh, probably fit two toddlers in the back. Yeah. So Kevin is taking us somewhere. I have no idea. It's a surprise, and we're gonna drink or eat or something. We're in Pebble Beach, by the way. This is very very pretty here. So it is October 4th, about 6 p.m. Sun is just about to set. Fog Bank is coming in. Um, the Steelwater Yacht Club was so nice and uh, let us stay on a mooring Pebble while we were Yacht. here. It's either the Pebble Beach Yacht Club or the Steelwater. Steelwater Cove Yacht Club. We are getting ready to go to San Simeon and this is the passage that kicked our butt last time that made us decide that we wanted a bigger boat. So my nerves are a little uneasy right now. Um, but the weather was better than it was <laughs> when we decided to go last time. So um, I just made dinner. I'm not really feeling it though, so I'm not gonna eat it. <sighs> and hopefully my nerves uh, calm down when we're out there, because I don't know, besides the big fog monster, it doesn't look that bad, but I mean, See that? Do you, I mean, that's not fun. So we'll see how it goes tonight. John takes the first watch, thank God. Because um, frankly, he enjoys night sailing and to me it's absolutely terrifying. And uh, it's about a 12 hour sail um, to San Simeon. So, um, about what we did when we went to um, Santa Cruz, I know, but uh, straight from San Francisco, but uh, this one's a little bit different where there's really no safe anchorage to go into, so it's always kind of a, it's kind of a, scary, I wouldn't say scary, but definitely more of a nervous one. Uh, we're going to try to get out here, at, we were trying to do it during the day, but um, we have to leave around 4 a.m. in order to get to San Simeon at daylight, because that one can be tricky as well, coming in with all the kelp. So I'm trying to get out of here right about now so uh, we can weave our way out of this big kelp field that we're currently moored in. So, so because I don't want to foul the prop. So, so yeah, so this is, this is it. Uh, uh, the first big night sail since we've come, come down from Washington. So it, it should be a beautiful night. They're calling for 10 to 15 knots from the northwest. So that means it'll be more like, you know, five to 10 knots over deck. It should be really comfortable and um, it's not too cold. There, there is the, the, the marine layer is coming in right now though, but from satellite imaging, I have Wi-Fi luckily on the, on the boat. From satellite, it looks like it only goes to, you know, another 30, 40 miles down. So we should pop out of that in the middle of the night and it should be starry, starry nights and, uh, or starry, yeah, starry night and, you know, beautiful sailing. Cut in right around this, see this one right here? Cut in right there and then go back out. Perfect, keep on coming, keep on coming a little bit more. All right, and now straight.
think that we are somewhere in the Arctic right now. And uh, you wouldn't be far off. As the so rolly we devised the uh, the emergency sleeping center in the <laughs> in our uh, saloon alley. Well, this cove is notorious for dunking people, and today we had our first dunking in our new dinghy. After landing in the shores of San Simeon, we see the sights and visit Shannon's family in Cambria. We have a dead battery. We could ask someone for jumper cables. We then head for Point Conception and the Santa Barbara Channel. Be sure to subscribe to our videos if you haven't already. Also, if you want to know how this trip started, watch our first video, SV Prism Prelude. If you enjoy these videos, please feel free to go to svprism.com and hit the donate button. These donations help with boat and video expenses, and we really appreciate it. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.